And what sort of patients would require Technigas? We're, we're mostly known for diagnosing pulmonary embolism. In the 66 countries in which we operate, that's what we're best known for. However, because we're a true functional ventilation imaging agent, we're seeing more applications beyond PE, uh, things like lung transplant patients. And we've just now made an announcement about an innovation, a new research innovation that we're involved with about looking at mild to moderate asthma. This facility is pretty impressive. I mean, how many employees have you got here? We've, we've got close to 80 on site here. Um, the, the, the business has grown dramatically, particularly with, uh, with our entry into the US. We've scaled up to accommodate that, that demand. I know you're big in Canada. How's it been going in America? Canada is, uh, has been our number one market for uh, a number of years. We've just now launched into the US, and, and it's, going, it's going great. I think when you look at, at our advancements in the U.S. market, we've, uh, we've implemented Technogas at some pretty important key opinion leader sites. Uh, our pipeline is, is growing and we're generating revenues in that market. And the Technogas product, just talk us a little bit more about how a patient uses it and can it be reused again and again? So Technogas is, uh, when you are when you, uh, working with Technogas, it's a single patient administration. Uh, they take the synthesis module, they take the components that we manufacture here at our site in Kingsgrove, they add a very small amount of, of radioactive tracer. Uh, our Technogas system creates these nano-sized particles that once inhaled, they act like oxygen. Anywhere that oxygen goes in the lungs, our product is deposited there. And then they image that patient under a gamma camera in a nuclear medicine department. And how successful has it been, like the take up from medical operators all over the world? Well, we're in 66 countries around the world, and every market in which we're established, we're the agent of choice. A, a recent survey showed that we're 85% of the market in those established locations. And we talked about America, but we know there's the new, well, it's not that new anymore, but President Trump tariffs on pharmaceuticals. Could that potentially affect your product being shipped to the United States? Well, we're insulated certainly in the near term. Um, we, we had a significant amount of inventory that we had placed already in the US before the, the tariffs were announced. The second thing I'd say is that we're also quite unique in that we're the manufacturer, we're the uh, exporter, we're the importer, and we're the distributor. So we have our hands on a, a number of levers that a lot of companies outside the US don't have. And, and I think the third thing is it's still up for grabs as far as what's happening with that decision. I think it's, it was heard before the Supreme Court on the 5th of November, and we should be hearing in the next few months if those executive orders are going to stick. So you're sort of in a unique position where, as the importer, you will bear the tariff fee yourself. I don't know if that would affect that many people. <laughs> no, uh, we're, we're, we're insulated in, in a, in a, uh, compared to a lot of other countries, or com companies rather. All right, look, I know the US FDA have been to this facility yeah. in Kingsgrove. I mean, what's the process like of having those inspectors here? Uh, an FDA inspection usually goes for about two weeks, uh, and it's all hands on, hands on deck. Um, we've been operating in, in multiple jurisdictions and multiple regulatory frameworks for years. So we know how to handle a, 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 an audit, but the US FDA is a, is a different level altogether. And what are your targets or your milestones for growth in the United States? Um, well, I think uh, the U.S. has got half the world's nuclear medicine departments. Uh, we have about 1,600 units in those established markets in 65 countries around the world. Half the world's nuclear medicine departments are in the U.S. Um, we see the near term in diagnosing pulmonary embolism alone, about $180 million for us. Um, but we see that growing beyond PE uh, to well over a billion dollar potential market. And how are you going to fund your growth prospects? Well, we've already planted the, the flag, I suppose, in the U.S. in the inventory that we've, we've landed there. Every time that we, uh, we get a contract and do an installation, it, it generates revenue. In fact, um, even in this early stages uh, in the United States, it's already become the, the number two revenue generating uh, country for us for the consumables. And plans to establish manufacturing in America, how concrete are they? I think it's more from a risk management point of view. I think you know our site here has been operating um, very much bespoke equipment that we have here. It's just good risk management to have a secondary manufacturing plant somewhere else in the world. And talk to me about your third party business as well. How does that work? 
We're in 66 countries. We're direct in 17 of those. In those markets in which we're direct, we saw an opportunity to leverage our regulatory expertise, uh, our sales force, and our service engineers to offer uh, that sort of um, operational capabilities to third parties. It's, we're leveraging our, our, our assets in there and being able to get closer to our customers to drive the growth of Technogas. And when you look around the world, I know America is obviously a huge market, but what about Europe? We've been a step. Europe used to be, uh, and it's going to be, I guess, uh, when you talk about our growth in, in North America, that will take number one. From a regional point of view, we've been in Europe for a number of years. It's our largest region. Um, it used to account for you know, close to 60% of our revenues just in the Technogas side of things. Canada was always our number one, our number one market for the last 10, 15 years. The U.S. is going to eclipse everywhere. And why has Canada been number one? Uh, I, it's just we have 100% of the market share, and that's the strength of the technology that we have. There's nothing like Technogas. Uh, it, we show true functional ventilation imaging. And, and I think with the advent of, of improved cameras and AI, it's, it's given a level of confidence to the clinicians in sensitivity, specificity, all of the markers in, in which that they rely on to, to provide an accurate diagnosis. So how is AI working with you now? AI is opening up a whole different world for Technogas. I mean, we're best known for pulmonary embolism. But when we see what we can do as, as we demonstrate how oxygen is actually deposited throughout the lung, how it's actually being ventilated in the lungs itself, it has applications across basically every respiratory medicine. We're seeing um, the applications in COPD. We're seeing applications in asthma. Uh, it's historically also been used in lung transplant patients, lung volume reduction. But with AI, it gives a whole different level of information to the clinicians, not only from a diagnosis point of view, but a patient management point of view. And from an investor perspective, just give us a sense of your shareholders. Are you a lot of retail shareholders, institutions? Uh, we've got a, a mixture. Um, we have a very strong group of investors who have believed in this technology for a number of years. And I think probably in the last, last 10 years, we've, we've, we've grown our institutional investors. We don't have a lot of retail. Uh, some days we don't even trade. And what are the targets for getting to profitability? Or are you focused on growth right now? Well, I think certainly the U.S. is, is the growth, their growth engine. Uh, historically, you know, every market that we're in which we're operating, we consider ourselves profitable. The U.S. is that next, the next level. Um, and the, the returns that we're already seeing in those established customers um, and the trajectory that we have with our pipeline, uh, profitability is, is, is in the near term. All right, let's bring it back to where we are now. You are a very niche manufacturer in Australia. I mean, how, what's it like being one of the few manufacturers that are sort of left in this country? Because a lot are moving overseas. You know, we're very proud of, of what we've accomplished here and what we continue to accomplish here. And um, we've got a, a great resource of, of, of people that we can, we can draw upon, uh, the, the people that we have for quality, the manufacturing capabilities. Um, this is our home and we're going to continue to manufacture here. Is it hard to find skilled labour in this market? Everyone that we have operating here um, is, is, is an absolute resource for us. Um, skilled, skilled operators are, are hard to find, and when we find them, we, we want to we retain them, and so we have a very low turnover here. And as a manufacturer, do you get any support from the federal or state governments or anything like that, or are you out on your own just doing your thing? Yeah, we're, we, we have been able to access some of the R&D incentives, but um, that's about all we're tapping into at the moment. All right, and your growth prospects then over the next 12 months, what have you got, what have you got in store? Well, it's, uh, it's US, 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 but that being said, um, we've always run in parallel the, the longer term growth objectives of, of our Beyond PE strategies. We've made an announcement just uh, last week about this initiative that we're doing in Canada uh, looking at mild to moderate asthma, and that goes with a, a number of other initiatives that we're doing to build the application and use for our technology and other, and other uses. James McBride, Chief Executive, Cyclopharm. Great to talk to you. Thanks, Ed.